Hey, what's up, people? Piz out here, and yes, I got a haircut, got the short hair. Um, so, just get that right out of the way. The long hair is gone. I chopped it all off. Um, it's much cooler. It's much lighter, um, and um, I'm enjoying it. Um, I may do a standalone video just talking about um, me cutting my hair because um, I got I got some interesting reactions to some video or some pictures that I posted on on Facebook and um, about cutting my hair and stuff. So may do a video about that. I don't know. <clears throat> This video, um, I want to talk to you guys about Hatchet 3. Yes, uh, something compelled me to pay $1.27 and rent Hatchet 3 out of the red box. Um, I hadn't heard a whole lot about Hatchet 3. What I have heard about Hatchet 3 was that it was um, pretty good. Um, that it was a different kind of Hatchet movie. Adam Green did not direct the film, he wrote the film. Um, but that was sort of the feedback that I'd gotten um, about Hatchet 3, that it was a different kind of Hatchet movie. And I just, should just go ahead and say the first two Hatchet films I hated. Uh, the original Hatchet I thought was one of the most criminally overhyped and overrated horror films that I've seen in a very, very long time. Um, yes, a lot of over-the-top, uh, you know, bloody gore effects. But aside from that, just a bad movie. Hatchet 2, pretty much more the same, only with half the budget. Um, Hatchet 3 pretty much picks up right where Hatchet 2 left off. Um, Danielle Harris has just pumped like three shotgun blasts into Victor Crowley's face, uh, pretty much removing his face. Um, <sighs> He wakes up, he follows her into the woods, he proceeds to then get cut in half by a chainsaw, and uh, Daniel Harris proceeds to pick up what's left of his head and carry it into the local sheriff's department, and um, yeah, the story sort of takes off, takes off from there. Um, we're treated to pretty much more of the same, really. Um, lots of over-the-top, super bloody, super gory, um, special effects. Um, the movie is really poorly written. A um, lot of really flat, um, bad attempts at humor throughout. Um, bad acting. Uh, got a got a cast just full of, of convention all-stars from top to bottom. The best the best part of the movie is when um, <clears throat> Caroline Williams and a deputy sheriff show up at Sid Haig's house. And uh, Sid Haig, his five minutes in the film, if that really, is really the best, the best part of the movie. Um, I kind of once it got to the hour part, I was pretty much just praying for the movie to end. It's that kind of movie. It's just the kind of movie that you, I mean, you, you wonder who read that script and said, yep, yeah, I'll put hundreds of thousands, maybe a million. I'm not, I'm not sure what the budget on this was. I'm sure it wasn't very much, but I mean, if, 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 who, who in their right mind would put, a dollar behind it. I, I have no idea. I mean, I, again, Hatchet 3, please let this be the end. Um, they created some sort of ridiculous backstory with Victor Crowley that he's this repeater. He's some kind of spirit. He cannot die regardless of how no matter, regardless of what's done to him. I mean, within the first five minutes of the film, he's completely cut in half. Um, yet he returns. Um, and it has something to do with the backstory of, of what went on with his father, and they have to return his father, and blah, 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 some sort of revenge. I don't know. Who, I mean, there's, there, it's very, very, very thinly plotted. It's basically just throw a bunch of characters in the woods, let Victor Crowley tear them to pieces. Um, the special effects, the gore effects, are horrible pretty much I mean it's all like you know oh there's like um, you know he's carrying around a mannequin's head or you know somebody's head gets torn off and there's just you know 
geysers of blood and it just a plastic body it just looks I, yeah, I mean you can kind of look at the movie and, and people who are going to defend this movie are probably going to say oh it's tongue-in-cheek it's you know it's winking at you it's um it, it's laughing at itself with you uh, you're you're in you're in on the joke it's in on the joke with you I, I don't think so I mean I didn't get that <laughs> Um, I definitely didn't get that vibe. Um, yeah, there's a lot of attempts at humor uh, that it wants to, um, you know, the movie wants to have those kind of jokes. Those kind of jokes, like I said, fall incredibly and horribly flat. Um, the only humor in the movie is really um, the humor uh, one would um, get from just watching a really bad movie. Um, it's... Um, yeah, I don't know. I, wow. Hour and a half of my life wasted, um, and I kind of should have known better. So if you <laughs> disliked Hatchet, yet you thought, hey, I'll check out Hatchet 2 and disliked Hatchet 2, uh, and you're thinking, hey, why not check out Hatchet 3 just to see? <laughs> um, don't, because it's more of the same. Uh, just bad, 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 bad. And let's hope um, this is the end. Let's really hope that this is the last Hatchet film. Anyway, uh, this is definitely the last Hatchet movie. I will, I will um, even spend a dollar twenty-seven to <laughs> rent out of the red box. I don't care what anybody says about it. I don't care who directs it. Um, yeah, Hatchet three, uh, crap. So anyway, skip it. And uh, until next time, you guys take it easy. Peace.